China's nuclear power surpasses the U.S. China's unique skill in nuclear power. Can it completely change the world energy landscape? Why the apprentice overwhelms the master? What would be your first reaction if I told you there is a field where Americans once held an absolute God's eye view? They invented it, defined it, and even monopolized it. But recently, the U.S.'s most authoritative media, the New York Times, had to lower its proud head and utter a sigh of despair. We lost, and we lost badly. Is it the low-altitude economy? Is it large AI models? Or is it humanoid robots? None of the above. This field is nuclear energy. Yes, the very field that saw the U.S. build the atomic bomb and the world's first commercial nuclear power plant. Yet, this report revealed a counterintuitive truth with a tone bordering on industry earthquake. In what was once America's own backyard, China is staging a textbook. Dimensional attack. Crushing the competition not just in volume, but by ending the technological generational gap. It sounds unbelievable, right? But facts are often stranger than fiction. To use the most common analogy, America's current nuclear power construction is like a stubborn old craftsman engaging in purely handcrafted high-end customization. Every component must be repolished, every blueprint reapproved, the cost is astronomical, and the construction schedule moves at a snail's pace. And China? China has turned building nuclear power plants into dumping dumplings into a pot, a Chinese idiom for high-speed, mass production. We are engaged in standardized, modular, assembly line-style industrial production. While Americans are still quarreling over the compliance of a single screw, China is already mass-replicating nuclear reactors like building blocks. This is not merely a difference in speed, it is the slaughter of workshop mentality by industrial thinking. If the quantitative leap only causes the U.S. to lose face, the qualitative knockout leaves them with a chill down their spine. While European and American nuclear experts are still debating the feasibility of fourth-generation nuclear power, on PowerPoint slides, China's HTRPM, high-temperature gas-cooled reactor pebble bed module, power plant in Shirdao Bay, Shandong, has already formally entered commercial operation. What does this mean? It means we possess a reactor that cannot melt down. It does not require water cooling. Even if the cooling system completely fails, natural heat dissipation guarantees safety. This is true. Black technology. The closest humanity has come to the dream of absolute safety in the use of nuclear energy. And this dream was realized first in China. This is not just a technological victory. It is a strategic contest over national will, supply chain ecosystem, and strategic vision. What exactly happened between Americas? Lost three decades. And China's corner overtaking? Why has the former teacher been pushed into a corner by the student? Let's peel back the layers of fog and see the cruel truth behind this transfer of power. I, the price of arrogance, America's. Lost three decades. In nuclear power. Data is cold, but it is also the most honest. Rewind the timeline to 1979. That year saw the infamous Three Mile Island accident, which acted like a huge emergency break, bringing the U.S. nuclear power industry to a screeching halt. From 1979 to 2012, a full 33 years, the United States did not approve the construction of a single new nuclear power plant. What does this signify? This wasn't just a pause in work. It was the brain death of the entire industrial chain. During these three decades, the U.S. suffered a generational gap in nuclear talent, and its supply chain was fragmented. It wasn't until 2013 that the Vogdal nuclear plant in Georgia reluctantly broke ground, attempting to restart the glory days. The result? It was an absolute disaster. The construction schedule was delayed repeatedly, the budget inflated again and again with the final cost soaring to an astonishing $35 billion, more than double the original budget, and the in-service date was seven years late. Every link failed, and every well burned money. This wasn't building a power plant. It was burning U.S. dollars for warmth. In stark contrast, across the ocean, China was staging a nuclear power frenzy. During the same period, 
We not only completed 13 reactors but had 33 more under intense construction. This contrast is like a limping old man racing a vigorous young man. The outcome is self-evident. The decline of any industrial sector is never due to poor technology. But because the ecosystem has died. The tragedy of U.S. nuclear power is that it believed technology could be sealed in a laboratory like a specimen, ready to be used at any time. But the reality is harsh. Industrial capability is a use it or lose it. Muscle memory. Thirty years of stagnation caused the U.S. to completely lose its skilled welders, efficient project management teams, and complete component supply chain. The distress of the Vogtel project was not accidental, but inevitable. It spent hundreds of billions of dollars in tuition to tell the world, the bitter fruit of deindustrialization is impossible for even a superpower to swallow. When a nation loses the ability to manufacture physical goods, even the most advanced blueprint is just a piece of waste paper. 2. Handcrafted artistry versus industrial replication. The dimensional attack of standardization. How can China achieve? More, faster, better, and cheaper. The core logic lies in two words. Standardization. In the U.S., due to the long-term absence of new projects, regulatory bodies, in an effort to avoid responsibility, made safety reviews pathological. Every project is treated as a unique copy, and every nuclear power plant is one of a kind. This leads to prohibitively high non-standardization costs. Think about it. If you bought a car that wasn't produced on an assembly line, but hand-built by several master craftsmen starting from the wheels, would the price be low? Furthermore, U.S. nuclear projects are highly dependent on private capital. Capital is profit-seeking and short-sighted. Facing construction periods often lasting a decade and astronomical interest rates, Wall Street elites have long since fled. In contrast, Chinese state-owned enterprises like CGN, driven by national will, are pursuing a completely different path, standardized design and batch construction. We select a technological route and stick to it resolutely. The same design blueprints are used in one province and then the next. The same components are made by one factory, and then the next. The cost advantage brought by this economy of scale is terrifying. Even without considering exchange rate differences, China's construction costs per watt of nuclear power is less than a third of that in the U.S. 3. The Forgotten Honeymoon Period A Textbook Case of Technology Importation Many people may not know that the current state of China's nuclear power owes a debt of gratitude to the U.S.'s generosity, back then. The story goes back to 2001, when China had just joined the WDO and desperately needed to resolve a power shortage, deciding to import third-generation nuclear power technology. At the time, the U.S. company Westinghouse, which held the advanced AP-1000 technology, was in dire straits. With no domestic orders, the company was nearly bankrupt. China's massive order was like a life raft. U.S.-China relations were in a rare honeymoon period at the time. To secure the Chinese market, the U.S. government actually greenlit the transfer of complete design documentation, manufacturing processes, and even design specifications and operation and maintenance training by Westinghouse. This is an unimaginable science fiction scenario in today's era of chip blockades, but China's brilliance lay in not stopping at mere agency. We digested the AP-1000, absorbed French technology, then broke them down, chewed them up, and integrated them into our own system, ultimately developing the fully indigenous Hualong-1 and CAP-1400 Guaha-1. We bought the teacher's textbook and ended up scoring better than the teacher. 4. Fourth-generation nuclear power, a qualitative leap from follower to leader. If we were still catching up in third-generation nuclear power, in the fourth generation, China is already planting its flag in the no-man's land. The high-temperature gas-cooled reactor prominently mentioned by the New York Times is the best example. Traditional nuclear power plants use water to cool the core. Once the power and water supply fail, like in Fukushima, the core melts down because residual heat cannot be removed. However, the world's first high-temperature gas-cooled reactor completed in Shirdao Bay, China, uses helium gas cooling, 
and the fuel is encapsulated in high-temperature-resistant graphite spheres. Even if all pumps stop, it can rely on physical properties for natural heat dissipation and simply cannot burn out. This not only means greater safety but also that nuclear power plants can be freed from reliance on seawater, built in land, and even used for urban heating and steam supply. While Western countries are still debating on paper and simulating data in laboratories, China has turned the blueprint into a steel behemoth and connected it to the grid. Besides the gas-cooled reactor, China's sodium-cooled fast reactors and molten salt reactors are also progressing simultaneously. This is not merely an overtake, it's a change of the entire race track. V. A 10 to 15 year gap, more than just a distance in time. The expert assessment cited by the New York Times concludes that China leads the U.S. by 10 to 15 years in the deployment of next generation nuclear power. This 10 to 15 years gap is not just a distance in time. It's a gap in confidence, talent, and systems. U.S. nuclear engineering students are switching majors because they see no industry prospects, and supply chain companies are closing down or pivoting due to a lack of orders. In China, tens of thousands of young engineers are dedicating themselves to the field, and the entire industrial chain, upstream and downstream, is thriving. This difference in momentum is harder to bridge than any technological disparity. The U.S. certainly still has top-tier laboratories and many Nobel Prize winners, but in the ability to translate science into engineering. The America that once built the Hoover Dam and the moon rocket seems to have lost its way. And China is now taking over the torch of human industrial civilization to continue exploring unknown frontiers. The anxiety felt by Americans is, in some ways, the highest complement to China's strength. The role reversal from teacher to challenger, took place in just over two decades. This tells us that in this world, there are no eternal hegemons, only eternal strivers. The light of nuclear energy will ultimately illuminate the path forward for humanity, and this time, the person holding the torch is the black-haired, yellow-skinned Chinese.